Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. I should have left them in jail. Trump trolls ungrateful love our ball over shoplifting basketball players. A one able entrepreneur from Southern California named Lavar Ball made a name for himself earlier this year by claiming that he could have beaten Michael Jordan in a game of one-on-one -on -one and predicting that this own son Lonzo, who just started playing for the Los Angeles Lakers, will be the greatest basketball player of all time. However, this nitwit recently got some serious egg on his face when his second son Lee Angelo was caught shoplifting sunglasses together with two other members of the UCLA basketball team during the squad's trip to China. Luckily for him, President Donald Trump happened to be in China at the same time, and personally intervened to have charged against the three students dropped and arranged for their safe return to the States. Instead of being grateful, however, Lavar decided to criticize President Trump for saving his criminal son. Said Lavar sarcastically on ESPN when asked about how he felt about Trump springing his son and the other two players from Chinese prison, who? He added, what was he over there for? Don't tell me nothing. Everybody wants to make it seem like he helped me out. This did not sit well with President Trump, who hit back at ball, tweeting, now that the three basketball players are out of China and safe from years in jail, Lavar Ball, the father of Lee Angelo, is unaccepting of what I did for his son and that shoplifting is no big deal. I should have left them in jail. Do you agree with Trump? Black employee exposes how hipster racist lib Lena Dunham loves using the N-word. Girls creator Lynn Dunham is a dyed-in-the-wool liberal and pretends to care about the interests of women, minorities and any other groups of people that she feels are disadvantaged. However, it should come to very little surprise that Hillary supporting feminist Dunham is in reality a hypocrite who operates out of her own self-interest. Dunham has been militant in defending women who accuse men of rape saying that we should always believe the women. However, when a male friend of hers, who is white, named Murray Miller who writes for her show was accused of rape, Lena suddenly changed her tune and claimed that his female victim, who is black, was lying. Another one of Dunham's writers, an African-American woman named Zinzi Clemens, just quit working for her as a response to her hypocrisy and burned her on the way out by exposing how Dunham is in real life a bigot who enjoys using the n-word. Wrote Simsy about spoiled racist Dunham, she and I ran in the same circles in college. Jemima Kirk was in my year at rest while I was at Brown. We had many mutual acquaintances and still do. Most of these acquaintances were like Lena wealthy, with parents who are influential in the art world. They had a lot of power and seemed to get off on simultaneously wielding it and denying it. She then described, Back in college, I avoided those people like the plague because of their well-known racism. I'd call their strain hipster racism, which typically uses sarcasm as a cover, and in the end, it looks a lot like gaslighting it's just a joke. Why are you overreacting? Is a common response to these kinds of statements. In Lena's circle. There was a girl who was known to use the n-word in conversation in order to be provocative, and if she was ever called on it, she would say it's just a joke. I was often in the same room with her, but I never spoke to her, only watched her from afar in anxiety and horror. Do you think Lena Dunham is a total fraud? John Kelly just broke down and said the three words that'll ruin Frederica Wilson. James Kelly told reporters that he was stunned, I was stunned. That this representative listened on a phone call from a president to a widow. General Kelly, I was stunned when I came to work tomorrow morning and brokenhearted at what I saw a member of Congress doing. A member of Congress who listened in on a phone call from the President of the United States to a young wife and in his way tried to express that opinion. He is a brave man.
General Kelly just came on to say that Democratic Congressman Frederica Wilson trashed President Trump when he called Sergeant Law David T. Johnson's widow, Mushia this week. Trump called the grieving widow. Frederica Wilson listened in on the conversation and then used it to trash our sitting president. Look what John Kelly said he had to do to cool off. With three chilling words Nikki Haley just declared war against major superpower. Nikki Haley is not messing around. According to Politico, the ambassador to the United Nations told a New York audience that Russian election meddling is warfare. I will tell you that when a country can come interfere in another country's elections, that is warfare. It really is, because you're making sure that the democracy shifts from what the people want to giving out that misinformation. Haley said. And we didn't just see it here. You can look at France and you can look at other countries. They are doing this everywhere. This is their new weapon of choice. And we have to make sure we get in front of it. The shocking comments came during a forum hosted by the George W. Bush Institute. While the mainstream media tries to spin a tale of Russian collusion, the administration has taken a surprisingly tough stance against the Kremlin. They've delivered sanctions condemned them publicly, and have now called their actions warfare, hardly the actions of a White House trying to make secret deals with the Russians. So the Russian collusion story is a lie. But today, Nikki Haley delivered some truth. What do you think of this declaration? Sound off in the comments and share if you love Nikki Haley. She has become one of Donald Trump's best servants and she deserves our love. With a simple move Melania Trump made history today and it's totally fantastic. Melania Trump is about to become a part of the world's most prestigious museum. Once a rarely seen politician's wife, Melania has transformed into a beloved fixture of American culture since becoming first lady, and she did it in literal style. A former supermodel, Melania attended her husband's inauguration in a stunning off-the-shoulder gown designed by French designer Hervé Pierre. This week, Melania's dress will be donated to the Smithsonian. Her ensemble will become a part of the First Lady's exhibit, according to Fox News. It's a fitting tribute for a woman who often speaks with her clothes as much as she does with her words. Her look stunned the world when it debuted, and now they'll be able to witness it in person. Comment congratulations! And share if you love our First Lady. Melania has brought so much class to this White House. She deserves it. MSNBC's Reverend accuses all Alabama Republicans of pedophilia. In a strong and insane rant, MSNBC's Reverend Dr. William Barber accused all Alabama Republicans of pedophilia. Seems true Orthodox evangelicals would not be supporting Lamor or this extremism in what I call Republican religionism. It is not Orthodox evangelicalism. They try to hijack that term. White evangelicalism is connected to white nationalism, it's connected to white supremacy. It is the backbone of racism that has happened in this country, started Barber in his crazy rant. I call them Republican religionist because they've given him cover and so many others on non-Christian policies like blocking health care is a non-Christian policy. Blocking living wages is a non-Christian policy. Blocking and suppressing voting rights is a non-Christian policy. Hating gay people is a non-Christian policy. Promoting guns a non-Christian policy, he claimed. He then accused Alabama Republicans of endorsing pedophilia for allowing children to be poor. Well. A real spiritual battle would be addressing the fact that in some counties in Alabama, 40% of the people in poverty. There are 24% of children living in households that are poverty. That's policy pedophilia, when you're hurting children and not addressing that. It's one of the lowest states in public education, he said. You've got 900,000 people in poverty. 20% with no health insurance. Those are the things that Christians should be dealing with if they were dealing with Orthodox Evangelicalism.
This is heretical, he said. Tucker reveals why it's the end of the Clinton era, finally and completely, are you relieved? For decades, smooth-talking Democratic darling Bill Clinton got a pass for all the sexual assaults he committed unchecked. Even so-called feminists like Ms. Magazine founder Gloria Steinem defended him, and his own wife who claims to support women helped cover up his sexual misconduct and defame his victims. However, now that powerful figures from all political persuasions are being felt for their sex crimes, Bill and Hillary Clinton cannot hide anymore. After more than 25 years of helping Bill Clinton hide his crimes, the liberal bias national media has finally been forced to take Bill's accusers seriously. This is music to the ears of Fox News host Tucker Carlson. On an introduction to a recent broadcast, Carlson officially declared why the Clinton era in the Democratic Party and America as a whole is now over. Tucker asserted that Bill and Hillary have been in charge of the Democratic Party for a quarter century and explained that they have held control because they and their acolytes have ruthlessly stamped out numerous charges of sexual harassment and assault brought against Bill Clinton. He went on, suddenly out of nowhere, that's no longer working for them. The society-wide backlash, has finally turned and bit the Clintons themselves. Describing how prominent Democrats have finally started to speak out against the Clintons, where is this coming from? What does it mean, other than the end of the Clinton era, finally and completely? Do you agree with Tucker that the Clinton era is now officially finished?